Looks good. It all looks good. And we are live. We're live, right? We are live. Hello, hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to Reflect and Revive. Uh, sorry we missed you last week, but we are back today. We thank you so much for uh, showing up, participating with us. While you guys are uh, hopping on board, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, get things started here. We're on the book of Acts. We're studying chapter 8, beginning with verse 9. We'll see how far we get. Um, again, as always on Reflect Revive, we always appreciate you all participating. We appreciate whether you're watching now or later. You can always comment at any time. And, uh, and again, we're eager for your participation, your prayers. If you have any prayer requests, please uh, go ahead and send, on, uh, send them on through. We have uh, Rosemary, who's on comment detail for us over mm -hmm. here. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Thank you. And uh, we got Aaliyah here. I got my tech, got my crew. Yeah. My one woman crew over here. Uh, Hi, Thank she, you. She can handle it all. She, she's yeah. got it. She's handling it. <laughs> she's an independent you. woman. So, tech. and uh, so again, yeah, if, uh, if you all have any prayer requests, please uh, pass them on through and uh, please share any comments and anything that uh, you gather from the study as well. Um, before we begin, does anyone have any prayer requests, Ken? Uh, I'm, I'm good. I just uh, pray for our, our meeting here, for our church, for our, our viewing family, and uh, and uh, anybody, all the, we're going to pray for your requests, even if you don't get it all in, God knows what they are, and we're going to include that, he'll, he'll understand in our, Absolutely. In our prayer this evening. Yes, David, prayer requests? Yes, uh, I'd like us to remember, um, Toshi had called me, I think it was last Friday, told me about the situation with uh, uh, brother and sister Hagerman, mm. Harold and Pearl. Pearl's oh, okay. not been, I don't know, she's just been kind of under the weather, and it's part okay. of you know, her condition and everything, but she hadn't been eating too well lately. I mean, she's talking and all that stuff, but just not really having much of an appetite. So we'll yeah. you know, remember them in prayer. So. Absolutely. Actually, you and I... Um, you might notice that uh, our pastor is missing. Again? Yes. Where's that guy? And he's uh, with fear and trepidation. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's preparing to get married this weekend. Oh, he's, he's getting married. With his, he's with his uh, fiance and the family. And, and uh, we want to pray for, lift up our pastor. Absolutely. You yes. know, and, and bless his marriage. Pastor, all you got to say is yes, and you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be good. Okay, and just say, say yes. And, and just say Yes, honey. Say so yes. Just just agree. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Be yes. a good man. Yes, Be dear. a good man. Yes, yeah. dear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, we're happy for him. Yes, Rosemary. Tony says, good evening, everyone. Pray for peace and healing in this world that we all come together because we are all children. Children of God. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you, Tony. All lives My matter. My sister. Don't think. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Uh, well, with that being said, David, would you like... Oh, wait. Yes, we got another one. Uh, Absolutely, yep. families. And I got a prayer request as well. I'm praying for our, our podcast uh, to go well. Oh, yes. Uh, we released a trailer uh, a couple of days ago, I think, and uh, we'll probably post a couple more. The first official uh, episode drops on Monday, the 21st. Yeah. So wow. uh, stay tuned for that. And also I'm praying for um, everyone out in uh, California dealing with all the fires. Yeah out there and, and affecting Oregon and Washington as well Oregon Washington yes. the families uh, friends out there and so we're praying for them as well and Maria Sombrano says good evening everyone hi good Maria hello Maria. Maria welcome hi 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 all right so that being said David could you lead us in prayer please sir? sure thank you let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you this evening that we have the opportunity to come together as we just had mentioned before in, in prayer in regards to uh, your opportunity to work in us, to reveal to us through your word, your message, your information to us to help us to live lives that are pleasing to you. And Father God, we know that uh, without you, without the strength that you provide to us, we are capable of doing anything. Anything we do, Lord, would not be complete and full and honor to you unless it was done with full trust and complete you. So we ask for that tonight. And Lord, tonight we want to lift up a very special group of individuals. I'm, I can't give them all by name, but you know each one of their needs at this Amen. very hour, Lord. And we just want to pray for each one, for yes. those who are in need of physical healing, uh, for those in need of spiritual healing, and those in need of direction and encouragement in their lives. And also, Lord, for the 
terrible things that are taking place in our world, particularly yes. on the West Coast with all the fires that seem to be burning out of control at times. We just pray for a uh, relief there and that the, some rain would come to help uh, the firefighters who are working there in their efforts to bring these uh, fires to an end. Plus also the storms that are taking place here over in the East Coast, in the Southeast, yes. the uh, uh, high winds and the rain and everything else that's happening there. We pray for relief and help for each of those. And Father God, we just remember tonight that we want to live our lives in accordance with your will and your purpose. And we pray that tonight's lesson, as we look at these, uh, examine these scriptures, that the Spirit will open our understanding and to know, enlighten our eyes. As the scriptures say, open thou mine eyes, and that may hold wondrous things out of thy law. So we claim that promise tonight here in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 All right. So we are in. Book of Acts, chapter 8, and give us, I'll just give us a little recap of last time. Uh, it was Miss Knight and I a couple of weeks back. We were going through verses 1 through 8 in chapter 8, and we were able to talk about the, the persecution of the church, uh, where Paul uh, comes in consenting to the death of, uh, of Stephen, and uh, basically from there on out is everybody scatters, okay? Everything was being preached there in, in uh, Jerusalem and then Paul comes in fury not even uh, knocking on doors he was coming in and anybody who was a follower of Christ they were persecuted killed put in prison and uh, but in it all somehow God always finds a way right so what does he do that is when Christ uh, begins to be preached throughout Samaria now mm -hmm. so kind of in, in dealing with this bad thing something good comes out that now uh, the gospel, the good news is now starting to get preached more and more to the world now. And then uh, we, we come to uh, chapter 8, verse 9, where we're going to start out tonight. Uh, we're going to be looking now specically at uh, Philip, right? Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, no, yes. The, the, this is okay. Simon. Or Simon. 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 Yes. Yeah. For yeah. That. And uh, yeah, and then the he's sorcerer. exactly. And then uh, with the sorcerer and, and, a, and a very intriguing story. And we hope again. Uh, this lesson could be a, a blessing to you as we begin reading. Okay. And we will follow up with Philip if we have time. Absolutely, yeah. And we'll see how far we get. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Ken, would you go ahead and uh, read the first three verses for us, starting with uh, verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of god and to him they had regard because that he was long time that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries now this is very interesting because i know when i read this i you know people were saying the this man is the great power of god hmm. which to me is like I mean, obviously, I don't think they've been preached to about Christ. So what is it that they, they that they knew about God? What was their perspective on it? And, you know, what, what do you think, David, um, as far as this man? Well, I, I think if we go back to in the previous verses there, it um, shows that Philip, when he went to that city, and we're talking about the same city here. So mm -hmm. they apparently these people had heard uh, Philip's preaching, and yet they were still led astray by this person uh, Simon you know, who claimed to be someone great you know and they accredited his power to the power of God so maybe they mistakenly thought that he was part of you know what Philip had been talking about you know because it says in the verse 7 there mm -hmm. it says for in the case of many who had unclean spirits that were coming out of them shouting with a loud voice many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed and there was much rejoicing in the city so all these manifestations of the God's great power was working through them through the you know the efforts of Philip and so now the Simon claiming to be somebody great, so they must have maybe thought that Simon must be connect, somehow connected with this, this Philip who had come there previously before. And they were giving attention, verse 11 says that, but then in verse 12, as we go on there, it says, mm -hmm. but when they believed Philip's preaching the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized, men and women alike, and even Simon himself believed. So it's amazing that you know, they thought that Simon somehow, what his power was somehow, they're giving it credit to God. Mm -hmm. And that at the same time, when they had heard Philip's preaching and seeing the, you know, the spirits being, you know, 
exercised from out of these people and the lame that were paralyzed were healed and all that. So they somehow made that equation with that. Yeah. But I think eventually, we're, as we read on here, we're going to discover that they they were wrong in their assumption about that. Yeah, and yeah. to me, it always seems like wherever there's a lot of power in Christ, yeah. there's always going to be a counterfeit. Yep. There's a, the Satan, yeah, Satan will, is always going to be there to try to counteract Absolutely. the works of Christ, the works of his followers, yep. to lead people astray. Right. Because if anything, that sorcerer, you know, mm -hmm. tried to lead him astray, and he probably enjoyed that power a lot, just a lot of self-love, a lot of self, yeah. oh, wow, look, look how the people view me, right? Yeah, he's well, trying to take all the attention to himself. I yeah. Said, you know, he's some great one. Yeah, whereas mm -hmm. Philip is not seeking attention, but seeking to bring people yeah. into yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah. Like, what do you think? I think, I think uh, interestingly enough, um, we're going to find out a little bit more about Simon later. But right now, it's interesting because Simon did uh, apparently some great manifestations through whatever yeah. power we believe in yeah. the devil who can do great things. Right. Um, but he saw, I believe, the disciples doing something even more powerful. And, and I wonder, he said he was baptized, but I, I wonder, and I think we'll answer later, mm -hmm. the question comes up, was he truly converted? Right. Or was he just desiring something greater than what he had? I think we'll yeah. discover yeah, because, that as, I we, mean, as we get further into yeah, it. When we study. get mm -hmm. baptized, and I, I couldn't tell you the quote, you, maybe you do, David, where it's not just by water, but it's by fire. It has to be a renewing also of the spirit yes, as absolutely. well and let, letting go of that old self letting go of your se of the old self is yes. so important because if you don't let go that baptism really is nullified mm -hmm. you have to surrender all when you go under that water and come back up absolutely now scripture tells us that and then uh you know and, and on top of that and this i think ties in with the with the the series on the on the sermons with with moses where you have uh you know moses demonstrating God's power and then you have Pharaoh who's uh demonstrating trying to match it you yeah, know yeah, with the yeah. with his sorcerers rod his, the rod snake snakes, and, snakes all yes. and all that so you it's like I said you always see these reoccurring repeating themes throughout and they're very prevalent throughout the, the yes. entire word as yes. well yes so I'm going to go ahead and continue on on verse 13 it says then Simon himself also believed and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles uh, who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent uh, Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had... Uh, fallen upon none of them they only had been baptized in the name of the lord jesus so again like you said simon believed right and then seeing the miracles and signs which were done so is it i mean if and it helped me out with this this is something i want to understand i guess if if simon sees that but he's performing these acts of sorcery and people are amazed like what else is he seeing there that maybe wanted, I guess, convicted him of getting uh, baptized? What do you think, David? Well, it says that um, he observed, as he observed these signs and these great miracles taking place, and we're told what they were back in verse 7. Mm -hmm. You know, those who were paralyzed were he and lame were healed. Um, this unclean spirits coming out of them. You know, it, it makes you wonder because if Simon, you know, he... In other words, he says he was a sorcerer who was practicing magic in mm -hmm. the city. So, I mean, you're, you can just kind of guess what he might be doing. You know, how would that be a benefit to the people there when what Philip's doing is exercising evil spirits coming out of them and, and healing people who have been sick and lame and all that. So he sees these and he says he's constantly amazed. And then he, when he comes down and Peter and John pray for them and they receive the Holy Spirit, then he wants to receive the Holy Spirit too because he thinks the Holy Spirit is another another you know, manifestation that he wants to experience and that he wants to use as well. Now, I don't know if that's, he was, it, we don't know what his thinking was, right. but I, I, we do know one thing that going back to what Ken said, you know, he obviously wanted something to make himself more well-known 
you know, and all that, and be even greater and all that. So his motivation for that, you know, obviously was the wrong motivation. Right. Yeah. Just a comment uh, mm -hmm. from the clear word uh, translation was a more uh, translation of into today's language. It says yes. that uh, Simon said he accepted Jesus, was baptized. It said he followed Philip everywhere, watching every move that he made, observing with amazement the miracles he witnessed. And then uh, it's interesting too here to me as you as you were reading, mm -hmm. it says when they saw the manifestations there. Philip was there, and he was certainly a servant of the Lord. But they, who did they send for? Yeah. It looks like they sent up for uh, Peter and John, and John. Mm -hmm. who had, I think they regarded in a little higher yeah. esteem, perhaps. And he and they came down to to witness this yeah. uh, this event and the and the manifestations that we're going to read about here in just oh, a yeah. bit. Yeah. David, can you uh, continue reading on verse seventeen through nineteen? Okay. Then they began laying their hands on them, and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was bestowed through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he'd offered them money, saying, Give this authority to me as well, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and keep going. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have no part or portion in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that, if possible, the intention of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bondage of iniquity. But Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me yourselves, so that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. And so when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. So... Obviously, he had other intentions now, right? Yeah, I think he showed his hand, you know, because right. earlier yeah. I said he was baptized, but we aren't sure if he was convicted in heart and yeah. if he totally surrendered, if he was just amazed because of these things. Yeah. And here, the key is when he saw these things, he desired them, but salvation is a free gift. Mm -hmm. And he didn't grasp that, apparently. And he was going to buy it. That comes from Satan. I mean, that that proves yeah. where his heart really was to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. you know, in a sense, I don't know. Do you feel the same way? That he, that it was a different spirit. Yeah, it was. Him? It was uh, trying to sneak its way in, yes. if you will. Like we said, yes. the devil's always going to try to find a, a counterfeit or, or something to to destroy what God is saying, to letting us know. And I guess for me, in, in today's world, it's like, how do we, you know, we have people come to church, they, they, they want to learn, you know, some just want to visit, just someone to see what's going on. Like us as, as Christians, how, how do we recognize somebody like this? You know, I mean, we're all, we're all sinners ourselves, right? But it's like, sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to tell, like, you don't know if they're trying or if they're pretending and, you know, it, you know, it's, Sometimes I think it's hard because I, you know, what are what is the person's true intentions? And we, yeah. you know, it's, it's 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 a paradox. We we are supposed to judge, but yet the scriptures tell us by their fruits. Yeah, you know who they are. You know? Absolutely. And we kind of saw here. They took Simon in. You know, they didn't know yet. They took him in as as. But we they did should. take him in. Yeah, obviously, they took right him away. Right in. Come they on in. Him. Yes. Yep. And then later on, he manifested his spirit. You know mm -hmm. what the real spirit is, and I think that we should do the same with people who, who enter into worship, you know. Right. We accept them and we pray for them. But sooner or later, and, and hopefully in the end, no matter what they do, that their heart becomes right. Yeah. And, and they really come that. truly converted, you know. Sure. Yeah, and I, and I do think eventually someone's, uh, you say when you, you see the fruits of their labor, that sooner or later all that will come to fruition at some point, whether it's against something honest or not. We have a comment? This is my own comment. Oh, yes. In this day and age, it's so hard because people are getting better and better at disguising truth. Or their and motives or their feelings. Yes, yeah. that's oh, true. Yeah. But sooner or later, maybe they may disguise it so well that sooner or later, they're going to start believing it. Oh, and yeah, God will absolutely. will start working on them, hopefully. You yeah, know? hopefully. So, yeah, yeah. praying for that. Amen. Yeah. And when, when people come in, or just like this man, 
one of the things you can you can see is are they here you know sometimes people just come to be fed but to, and that's fine you I mean, know and and that's okay but you can't get yeah. fat either you really can't have an experience with jesus without sharing because yeah when you get you want to share it and then you see you'll see sooner or later if people want to get involved in a ministry or if they just want to come and leave and mm -hmm. uh, and that's it so you right. kind of get a sense you know where where somebody's going and and we don't reject them either way not right. in our church we accept everybody and just pray that you have a true conversion and a experience absolutely yes we have a comment tony says i don't know but i did not believe that simon was not true to be close to god because he loved his own power mm, but where did the power come from what was the source of the, the source power? of the power you know what i mean in the past was from the devil yeah, and and because again, it does mention the sorcery. Yes. So that 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 power is coming, not from God, but you know, because because the devil can do miracles too. Absolutely. You know, he's he's not this guy with horns on his head that's all mm -hmm. red. You know, he's he's a beautiful angel that was up there in the hierarchy, right? He was the highest. He was the highest with Praying all these being. jewels next and to, everything. So himself. you know, and he's he's a trickster, and he you know it, he can bring down fire from heaven as yes. well. So yes. that's. So. You know, and um, oh man, I had this in my head right now. I, and, and and seeing that's the other thing too for ourselves was, you know, kind of piggybacking off of what Rosemary said that, you know, what's that one where we have to be as as harmless as doves, but as wise well, as serpents, wise serpents, serpents. serves. Yeah. So, I um, think to counter those things when you start getting those people that are, you know, kind of be more i guess clever about their disguise if you will you know that's where we also have to spend as much time with his word and with god and doing following his will so we can recognize mm -hmm. uh people like this i think what do you think david yeah no i agree i agree i think that you know the gift of discernment is one of the gifts of the spirit mm -hmm. you know, to be able to discern people's you know their motives not judging their motives but being able to discern by their actions, you know, their fruits and all that, you're able to quickly understand, you know, where they're coming from and why why they're doing the things they are and that you want to. Yeah. You know, and what it says here, uh, see what, I'd be interested with, you got the clear word there, yeah, you know, what, what it, it says, which um, one? what he says, um, it's the part, um, verse 23. Hmm. How does, it, how does uh, the clear word render that? It says here, it says, uh, it's obvious that you're jealous of what we are doing. And you're being controlled by the power of sin and not by the power of God. Mm. Mm. Tony wants to know from the evil one. Tony, I don't know uh, I'm not sure what, what she means by that. Means from the, the Satan the power, from the power came. Saying? Yes, the yeah. power came from the evil yeah. one, exactly. Yeah, because it says that here mm -hmm. because of his jealousy and he was trying to buy it, you know, before. And where you're, does it say that? This is in the 23rd, but this is on the clear word, yeah, the you clear know, word. that yeah. that makes it a little more clear jealous of what we're doing you're being controlled by a power of sin not by the power of god mm -hmm. and i think david is is a great scholar on on these matters uh but david isn't it wasn't the bible what, whisper david, wasn't come on let me wasn't simon us kind of a he followed philip around and the apostle and he was kind of a uh, thorn in the flesh as as i have read in, mm -hmm. the, in the past it, he he was a trouble and that's what by the fruits you know him you know mm -hmm. and, he, and he he seemed to be trouble the rest of the time and that is a yeah. certainly a demonstration in time of where he really was in right. his in his heart yeah. and he didn't get on board and really help and you know he was a stumbling block more or less yeah and, and i think like kind of acts of sorcery i, I couldn't tell you i i know in uh if we look at uh, when we when saul when he goes then to and he, and he starts speaking to um, the mediums he, when he tried to bring up samuel yeah he tried to bring up you know again yeah. it, it's all kind of like the sorcery and and bringing up spirits and yeah. mediums and stuff like that and those are things that you know god tells us scripture to, denounces yeah it denounces yes. that yeah. We, we shouldn't be chasing those types yeah. of things and in fact they were to be put to death in, yeah, in the, right. in the old They're times, thing, if yes. I remember right. Absolutely. And see, one thing I know, and, and I do notice here, though, it says, you know, because Simon does say, pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. And that's 
pretty much all we hear afterwards. So we don't know necessarily what happens after, right, Ken? Uh, no, it says or, here, um, I think in, uh, obvious, and then Simon said to Peter and John, please pray for me that none of these happen. Mm -hmm. But his repentance wasn't genuine. For years afterward, he followed Peter wherever he went to trouble him. Mm -hmm. That's what it says here. That yep. he followed. That's right. I, I guess it was the same Peter. Simon. I wonder if that was the same Simon. I was thinking about that when yeah. you brought that up. Okay. And that's why. That I, that's be. what I recollected as. Yep. Okay. okay. So it was we, Peter. It wasn't it was Philip. Peter. It was okay. Peter that he followed, and 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 it said here that his conversion wasn't. Uh, it wasn't of the Lord, it, it, isn't it? His repentance. But his repentance yeah. wasn't genuine. Yeah. So which yeah, is, which is sad, you know. But they didn't, they didn't kick him out apparently because he troubled Peter, you know. Well, you know, and then I'm thinking and, Peter probably had the utmost patience, and mm -hmm. you know, it's how often do we seek chances ourselves, right, to repent, to turn away from sin, to try to, uh, you know, make our lives better, follow God's word, right? Yes. You know, and and ultimately this this man could just. You know, he's, he's probably seeking the same thing, but maybe he wasn't, I don't know, um, seeing things uh, in the way that God wants to see or Christ wants us to see things, you know, not no true conversion. Because, I mean, you know, they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So we can can imagine that these pe people who were who truly repented and uh, were baptized, you know, they, they probably, you know, made a full turnaround who knows if you know these disciples went and they probably preached the word gave their exactly. testimonies throughout samaria and again that's you know the example we see where everything starts to spread right. and we start seeing uh, god work everywhere and and uh, and in many places throughout one thing on the holy spirit if i make a comment we know that when uh, we're baptized it says you receive a portion of the holy spirit mm. but apparently by the special laying on of hands they re received an additional portion of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that was enabled them to do miracles and and greater things. Yeah. And and we know that before Jesus comes, it says the Christians will be doing those same yeah. type, type right, of greater things. Greater manifestations than when yes. he was on earth. Yeah. Yes. I found it's here in Acts chapter thirteen. Yes. The same sign that uh, comes up and it's with Paul. Yeah. And are there any specific texts that kind of maybe could, I guess, add further uh, affirm, or, uh, affirm or whatever? With well, let's see what it says here. Uh, chapter 13 and begin with verse 6. In what? In uh, okay, what, so it acts, acts, right, let's tell acts, everybody. Yeah. acts chapter, chapter 13, 13, 13, verse 6. And well, there, let me look at we're, we're getting to that again. Uh, if there's any, any other uh, questions or, or comments that you might have, please go ahead and lay them on the. Sure. On our on our live feed, and we can go ahead and uh, do our best to to get to those questions what, and answers. What answer. verse are you in? Uh, beginning six. with verse uh, six. Six, okay. And you can go ahead and start reading, David. All right. It says here, and when they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, or Paphos, they found a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet, whose name was Bar Jesus, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elamas, the magician, for thus his name is translated, was opposing them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze upon him and said, You who are full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you'll be blind and not see the sun for a time. And immediately a mist and a darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking those who would lead him by the hand. Hmm. And this was Simon? This is the same one. Apparently. Is it? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, they even give the uh, the text in Acts 8, verse 9. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, they, as a reference to him. Man alive. Well, wow. I had no idea. Yeah, so you learned something new all yeah, the time. Yeah, I, 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 I never made that connection before, but as soon as you said that, Ken, I wondered. I said, that's the same guy? Is this the same guy that later shows up? Yeah, remember he's following me. Oh yeah. Wow. Anyway. And anyway, as and as we move on, so and again it says, when they had testified, preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many 
uh, villages of the Samaritans. So, mm. should we continue where Christ is preached to the Ethiopian? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and where, let's see, what verse are we at? Uh, 26. 26. Yeah. We're at 26, okay. Go ahead, David. Oh, but an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. And he arose and went, and behold, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting in his chariot and was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, mm -hmm. go up and join this chariot. And when Philip had run up, he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, well, how could I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture which he was reading was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is dilent, so he does not open his mouth. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall relate his generation? For his life is removed from the earth. Wow. So there you have the Ethiopian, right? Seeking God's word. And now it says here, how can I unless someone guides me? I'm assuming he did know how to read. He just didn't understand what the meaning, what of, the what meaning kind of, of it was. Yeah. See, I, I how, I, how was he able to get hold of scripture? I'm curious. Well, what, I, what, they had scrolls. You know, um, it says he was a worshiper. He had mm -hmm. gone to Jerusalem to worship. Okay. So I don't know. That doesn't, I don't know if that means that he was a practicing uh, Jew or he was a convert to, to uh, you know, to Judaism or, or mm -hmm. what, or he was just a Christian. I don't know. It doesn't say here. Maybe it might be in the clear word. I was going to say, if I could yeah. read that in the clear word, yeah, it kind it of it helps okay. us here. Yeah, because, I mean, we're talking about, you know, Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. I mean, I'm not sure what she follows or what her beliefs are, yeah. but I am curious. Go ahead, dude. It says, so that, in, in verse 30, so as a chariot came alongside Philip, he began to jog behind it and heard the Ethiopian reading from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah about man being slaughtered like a sheep. And the Holy Spirit prompted Philip to call out to the man, do you understand what you're reading? And the, and, and the uh, official or the eunuch said, how can I understand some of these Jewish expressions mm -hmm. unless someone helps me? And he orders driver to stop at the chariot and ask Philip if he could, would come up and help him understand these things. Right. And yeah, and we get it right there. So where he's he, reading it from the Jewish right. scriptures. And from that context as well, probably not understanding. And then, you know, very powerful there in verse 33. That's where we learn he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, meaning Christ. Jesus. Jesus Christ, was absolutely. the one. So, yes. you know, and, and you, you see a lot of this, a lot of this throughout in, in the New Testament where you have, you know, the... The apostles, the disciples, Paul, go, always referring back to everything uh, in the Old Testament. Always, you know, Stephen did it with that very long, powerful yeah. sermon he Same. gave. You, you see Peter always go back and always go back. And again, another reoccurring theme. You're always seeing them go back to the word. Uh, again, using it is written, it is written, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, you know. And and these, it, that was the only scriptures they had. They had, and yeah. These these were, hadn't been written for decades. Yes, yes. right. It yes. must maybe 50, 60 years. Something like that. You, after, you, yeah. after something Christ like that. Death, yes. So you know that they still had just the old the scripture, the everything the scripture. prior. Which again, which is what makes it so powerful. I know there's a lot that people that just focus only mostly on the New Testament, but not maybe not understanding that. Well, where do they? get their information from what they be all they always go back and and this is predicted mm -hmm. it was predicted christ come and how he would be uh, manifested you mm -hmm. know and, and even words that he said that were mm -hmm. in psalms and so, so that the, the old testament is very important in mm -hmm. our understanding and and referred to often like you say in, yeah. in the new testament absolutely and i'll go ahead and continue on uh, verse 34 and it says, So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or of some other man? And then Philip opened his mouth and, be, and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. 
Now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is the water. What hinders me from being baptized? Mm. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Now that is a pretty powerful and quick conversion, right? Well, I was just going to mention one, I mean, of the, one of the most powerful things here is how much is left out. Because I believe he started at Genesis and went. Because he was trying to understand all this, and right? He knew uh -huh. about, and he, even to baptism, mm -hmm. he knew about baptism because when he saw the water, he says, hey, this Let's was go. the end we're going to. Put Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Sorry, I probably made a ton of noise with that. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be hindered. No, but that's. The, but you noticed that, and I was remark. It's remarkable to me yeah. what's left. At, what's left out, but it's very, very clear. He says he started there and and went and studied the scriptures. So that, this wasn't just a short no. ride. A short, quick conversion. It sounds yeah. like it, but it's, but it, it's no. It, it is it, actually. I mean, true. it is, but it, it. But but it was more. There's more going on than meets right. the eye. Yeah, it wasn't just a block down the road. Yeah. What do you think, David? No, I agree. About yeah, this? Okay, absolutely. Yeah, he he probably gave him every scripture that there is that points to Christ in the in the Old Testament scriptures, beginning with Genesis, all the way. Yeah, you know, and and did Philip actually give this man any particular miracles and signs? I don't believe so. Other no. than the interpretation. Other than the interpretation, yes. so yeah, he didn't bring down you know, fire or yeah, heal anybody. No. Well, but, I guess the very end when he just disappeared. Yeah, when no, he, he, no he, that that was a manifestation, yeah. but but maybe 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 he knew of Jesus and heard right. of him, you know, yeah. just because of so he may yeah have yeah he had to have heard little, heard about but may not fully to, to desire to study because that's what he was studying those scriptures yeah. relating to Jesus yeah, yeah. and then, just, then you know ahead. I know and and I think one thing to also note here is the fact that sometimes every day we're looking for miracles. You know, especially in today's world with everything that's happening, uh, just just all the, the, the ugliness out there, if we will. Sometimes we want to see a miracle. Sometimes we want to be a part of that in some way, somehow. But Absolutely. then if you look at what Philip did here, all he did was basically give him a Bible study. Yes. Yeah. So and then look what the, the, the man did. So for me, it's like sometimes the miracles just work through you they work through people that yeah. it's just as simple as giving a bible study it's just as simple as giving a testimony that in itself is is miraculous enough i think and it can be very powerful you know if you're honest and you're genuine about it and and, and again as just you know make me willing lord exactly. you know, make me willing to be willing to share my testimony to share those stories Absolutely. you know and then you see it here there's there's proof here it doesn't have to be this wow miracle uh that, that you know some of these apostles that it's just as simple as a conversation and just letting people know which i think is just as powerful yes and i just might add for those people out there we see here where it went from nothing to baptism but your witness your own witness when christ is in your life you know um sometimes we don't see the results you know the bible tells us that one plants another waters and yeah. another reaps so you may not see immediately the uh the end result of your witness yeah. of your kindness of your uh generosity or or even a kind word or prayer prayer yeah. for somebody it, it may come and you don't see it but the lord will bless it he'll bless it and take it to fruition i believe Amen. oh yeah i agree absolutely how, how are we doing on time we have eight minutes. Good. Okay. Well, well, let's let's get down to to verse forty, Ken. If you continue reading, From, where did I stop? Uh, I was trying to think. Six so, minutes. Okay. Oh, verse thirty-eight 30, through forty. Thirty-eight, yes. and then we'll wrap it up after that. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Hmm. Ooh. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So all right, the Lord all right. I, 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 I need some clarification. He just act. did a disappearing act. He, he just went it. poof, gone. The so eunuch's like, whoa, where'd this guy go? Yep. Hallelujah, right? Mm -hmm. and Lord, yes. 
Lori says it's a beautiful transformation. And Tony says he tells him on verse 35, I guess about what you were talking about. Then, then Philip opened his mouth and began, beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Yes. Tells him about the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole, yeah. yeah. From beginning to end. And it's like, yeah, you, know, you go to the transformation where you're like this, and you're like this, and then you all like, whoa, <laughs> here we go, you know. And it, but could you imagine just just seeing someone and then he's just gone? Yeah, just gone, man. He just disappeared. Came out of nowhere. Came out, yeah. came out of nowhere and left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just amazing. You know, it's interesting there because um, in, I think it's Luke 24, verse 27, hmm. Jesus, when he appeared to, um, well, I guess it's after he appeared to the uh, the two men on the, on on the way, way to Emmaus. Emmaus. I was just there. Yeah. You know, the you know, same just, parallel. You know, and, and it says, that, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures. Right. In all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And mm. where he was born and, and raised and what must yep. happen to him and the all that time and and so we see the same thing yeah. basically here you know yeah the same exactly Philip so and he, then of course and then and uh, um, Stephen yeah and his yes defense in chapter seven same thing at the beginning just talked about when he, when, when when he, he gave the Jewish to... people but he talked about Jesus the Messiah and that he was right. protected you know? right right so that's powerful wow and again. Uh, that that brings us up to a close and uh we thank you all yes for joining us uh this evening and uh very very powerful uh for chapter indeed and uh we hope whether you're watching now or whether watching later that uh, you guys can uh, comment and again send us more prayer requests and uh, and if there is anything that you all may need please contact our church we're all here for you uh again whether it's you know uh, any physical needs, spiritual needs, any way we can help that, and hopefully we may be of service to you. Amen. And just in addition, it, if you if you do comment, and please do, um, this is posted, and people tune in. More people will view usually this later. Later, yeah, yeah. And so they'll see your comments. If you write something there, they'll see them too. And if it's a you know a question they they're going to be interested if it's an encouragement yeah. we appreciate that as well and pastor's usually pretty good about replying yes. uh quickly to those yes. things as well yes all right well let's go ahead and let's bow our heads okay. in prayer father in heaven thank you so much lord for opening your word to us opening our hearts lord and being able to understand what the true meaning of your word is and it's and it's love it's compassion it's mercy it's the fruits of the spirit lord and Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done for us, where the Reflect and Revive um, meetings go. We pray that it's a blessing for others. We pray that uh, yes, we can Lord. continue this. And uh, hopefully we have uh, more and more people coming into our church, more people responding to our, uh, our pages, our social media, and hopefully reaching out. And, and hopefully we can be of service to, many, uh, to as many people as possible. We thank you, Lord, for all the, the wonderful blessings, our health and our safety. Yes, and we ask this, uh, that you, as we head on out, we bless those, uh, that you can bless those that are, that are watching and are watching later, Lord. Yes, and we Lord. thank you for everything you do for us. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Thank you, everybody. George we'll see you. Bailey says, God George. bless you all. Thank you, George. George Bailey. George. Yeah. What does he want? <laughs> My old classmate. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. We went through school. Yeah, we went oh, through yeah. school together. Oh wow. Out, Look at that. He's out in Sacramento.